What is up, everybody? I am your host, Shane Mallory, joined by my co-host, Ricky DaCosta. And tell the folks what time it is. Run it back. Time to run it back. Episode Michael Jordan, a.k.a. 23. And how appropriate, right, that we reference the GOAT. That's the episode number because we might be having some GOAT talk on this podcast. Is that about the dude week. that's running it back? In the Super Bowl? I mean, yeah, yes. very well could be. Yeah. We'll see in about Quite two weeks if that is true. But yeah, listen, beautiful people, before we get into both of our topics of these two great, two great championship games, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Having great and tremendous growth, but it can always be faster. I think we are just a little bit over 50 more to get to 1,000. So, I mean, we're we're inching closer Let's and closer here. Let's do it. So, uh, give us those up. We need those five-star views, people, on all the major platforms, but we appreciate you. We appreciate the feedback, too, as well. But... Without further ado, let's get right into these championship games. Let's start with the game I'm sure that everybody's talking about, the one that led it off, the Ravens versus the Chiefs. Uh, well, let me pose a question to you this way. All right. Are we looking at our next great dynasty in sports in the Kansas City Chiefs? What do you Absolutely. Think? Yeah. Absolutely, right? Okay. So six consecutive AFC uh, championship appearances, yes, yes. right? If I'm not mistaken, they won four AFC championships. Correct. Lost to the right? Patriots once and lost to the Bengals once. Yep. Um, and so now they're back in the Super Bowl. They have an opportunity to go three and four in Super Bowls, mm -hmm. right? Uh, only losing to uh, Tom Brady, right? Yep. So like that, that's, you know, goat versus goat right there. Mm -hmm. um, so listen, um, it's just, you know, epic, right? And I definitely think this is the next dynasty. There's nothing really going on in basketball. We had the Warriors, so we're sort of past that. Who look like you they're know, kind of, you know, they might like be on their aging, way. Yeah, aging. yeah. Um, nothing in baseball, nothing really in hockey. And, and we got Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs again? Sure. Woo! Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, great game. Um, I thought it was going to be a little bit more back and forth. I was expecting a little bit of a different type of game. This was a much more, this is, this was like a slow down, knockdown kind of brawl type. This was a very physical game. And my takeaway from that game is any of you who didn't take it seriously throughout the season, the Kansas city defense, they bought that action. They bought that smoke, man. They, they want all the smoke in these games. And they, they, they brought it in that game to Baltimore. Um, I, looking at it just from my perspective, I thought the Ravens bullied teams all year. I mean, I watched them bully the Dolphins. I watched them bully the Lions. I watched them bully the 49ers. I mean, they bullied multiple playoff teams throughout the season. And it kind of looked like they more or less expected to go in and bully mm -hmm. KC. And listen, you don't bully a champ. The champs came in, and they were ready for that fist fight, physical knockdown, drag-out uh, drag brawl. And the thing that showed it right away is the drive and KC difference in this game to me, time of possession. They had the ball for 15 more minutes than Baltimore in that game. That's a hard game. That's essentially like saying the Baltimore offense was not in the game for an entire quarter of the game. Very hard to win at a, a yeah. conference championship game like that. Uh, listen, what more can you say about Mahomes? Were the numbers like insane? 241, 30 for 39, one touchdown, yeah. no interceptions. But the efficiency... The ability to make plays in crucial times. Anytime it seemed like a play was broken, his ability to scramble, elongate, find an open guy. That third down play to Kelsey, we were talking about that in the pregame. Just unbelievable. Like, when he needs to yeah. make a play, he goes to make a play. Now, you talk about this a lot last week in, like, your rant going at Josh Allen a little bit, you know, with speaking not going to dig. the truth, you But mean? listen, you I'll say it. Rant. Just speaking when, the truth. When it comes to a difference between those two, I think you highlighted that very well. What did Mahomes do? I'm going to my guy. I'm going to that dude out at tight end, right? Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey, a lot of people are sitting there thinking, ah, he's a little bit older this year. He looks a little bit run down. He could be the beginning of the end. Sure didn't look like that in that game, man. It looked like my man was uh, – he looked like the best pass catcher on the, in the game. Yeah. Looked like the best tight end in the league in that game. And the Ravens really didn't have an answer for him. And then when they started to try and tighten up their coverage, other people were open and they just ran the ball. Isaiah Pacheco, I've been talking about him all season. Again, 24 carries for 68 yards, but it was just the moments. Like, he gave you some big physical delivering runs, especially in that first half. Kansas City definitely played more conservative in that second half. It was kind of just like... We're going to just do what we have to to keep this lead. We're going to play the field position game. And, uh, you know, you and I were talking about this too. I feel like if they had 
to go and put a drive together. If the Ravens didn't have time in that game, I think they had one in their back pocket. Yeah. But, I mean, listen, hats off to the Kansas City Chiefs. You've got kind of the triumvirate. You've got the best quarterback in the game right now. You've got the best tight end in the game right now. And you've got, to me, the best head coach and play caller in the game right now. And I'll go so far as to say Patrick Mahomes to me, and I know I'm going to get a ton of feedback and comments on this. People going, are you crazy? He's too young. Patrick Mahomes, to me, is the GOAT. And I'll kind of explain to you why. I get what a lot of people are going to say. Brady has more Super Bowls. He has the stats. He has the accolades. All of that is taken. I understand it. Patrick Mahomes, pretty much, all he has to do is just keep playing out his career. And if he plays even to, let's say, 36, 37, he's probably going to have most of those individual records. Let alone, we don't know what he's going to do Super Bowls-wise uh, with his team. But let's just make it about this, all right? Forget that stuff. They both won multiple titles. So they both proven that they're great leaders and, and champions. When I look at Patrick Mahomes and I just watch him, I, I would challenge anybody to sit there and just come to me and say, you watch Tom Brady's entire career and you're watching Patrick Mahomes right now. And as great as Brady is, what can Brady do that Patrick Mahomes can't do, number one? And then on top of that, Patrick Mahomes, when I watch him, does things that not only the Brady couldn't do, no other quarterback I've ever seen. I mean, throwing the ball left-handed, his ability to scramble and elongate plays, his accuracy, his timing, his touch. And then when all else fails, you forget sometimes, oh, he can just go in for a 20, 30-yard scramble out of nowhere, too. Yeah. He's a tremendous athlete. I'm looking at it more from just the visual perspective. When I watch Patrick Mahomes play, he's simply the greatest quarterback I've ever seen. And I'm a Peyton Manning guy, too. So it pains me to sit here and say that he's even better than someone like Manning already. And I think, again, outside of the career stats, just watching Patrick Mahomes, to me, best quarterback I've ever seen. But listen, great game all the way around. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on the game in Kansas City Listen, I, I'll start backwards forward, right? Sure. Like, absolutely Patrick Mahomes, right? You know, based on where he is and where everyone else has been in his career, right? He is the greatest of all time, right? You even compare him to Tom Brady. Yeah. It took Tom Brady uh, 13 seasons to get to four Super Bowls, sure. right? Now, granted, Brady won three in his first four he years, did. right, of starting yeah. versus Patrick only won one. Not in the level of years, quarterback right? during that time that exactly, Mahomes right? quite was, sure. Same, but again, yeah. But you know, still, you, you they are, are winning. winning. Uh, so absolutely. you are, right? Absolutely. And so the beginning of his greatness started uh, uh, those first four years. Sure. And so now, but when you speed it up, right, going to four Super Bowls, Patrick Mahomes has done that in his first six seasons where it took Brady 13 seasons to do that. So, sure. uh, and, and obviously from a talent, there is no comparison, right? And now um, uh, Patrick Mahomes is maturing into the best game manager of yep. all time. So yep. that, that's a category that I'm going to put him in. Um and listen, right here, which people right make now, it seem like it's an insult, like your ability to, to, to manage the, a to game. The less talented yeah, people, but sure, sure. Right here, right now, end this debate. There's no one in the league that ever deserves to be compared to Patrick Mahomes I ever again. Totally, agree. Right? Mahomes and everybody I, else. I, I, listen, everybody thought I was hating, and I thought Patrick Mahomes is here, one A, and then and then Josh Allen had the ability and talent to be right there, sure. to be right there, and I can even argue from a physical talent perspective josh he Allen might be right might there. be better yeah might sure be better, sure sure right bigger He's bigger stronger yep. faster sure sure right however right when you start to think about right maturity mentality yeah. all of those it's upstairs tangible yep. leadership that's where the conversation sure. is over yeah. period now to the game uh you talked about the ravens bullying i th i think this game came down to 100 percent experience sure right? i totally agree uh, the Ravens expected to win, and all week yep. they they were they complimented. Mm -hmm. No bulletin board. Yep. As soon as the game, we were the so, best team be all sorry, year. Before the game starts, yeah, right? I'm what glad happens? you're gonna bring this up. Justin Tucker yep. goes into the Kansas City uh, side where they're warming up yep. and starts to kick field goals or attempt to kick field goals. Yep. Right, right. He was where stretching. Yeah, he stretching, was stretching right in front right? of him. So uh, there you go. All right, you just poked the bear. You just poked the bit, right? Pull on Superman's cake. right? Hey, this is all we need, right? All we need, yep. right? The kicker, yep. right? Yeah, brought that smoke. Reminds right? me of Manning back in the day. Uh, don't listen to what our idiot field goal kicker said. <laughs> right? That was like years listen, ago, but it's, yeah, it's a little bit out there that you yep. know Tucker likes to talk a little bit of trash. Sure. Well, guess what? You talk trash and you woke up the beast. Yeah. 
right? You woke up the beast. Now, going into the game, I'm hearing a lot of narrative. Everybody is throwing Lamar underneath the bus. When it comes to blame, right? Uh, to me, my 88% blame goes straight to the offensive coordinator. Right. Sure. Just be prepared. You might right, get some listen, hate in this comments based on last here's week. The but thing, go right? on. <laughs> to me, he showed his inexperience. Sure, sure. Right. He showed his inexperience. Yeah. Right. Um, he uh the, if you look at the play calling, sure. it was a ton of plays down the field. Yes. Down the field. Yes. First of all, the Kansas City Chiefs had six D backs on the field, right? So if you are the Baltimore Ravens. You just need to run the ball. Do you realize that Lamar was averaging six yards a carry? Mm. Do you realize that Gus Edwards was averaging six yards a Chiefs carry? Chiefs were in a nickel package almost the entire Gus game. Gus Edwards only had three rushing attempts yep, yep. for 20 yards. Yep. Give him the ball, right? And so there was the inexperience. Now, does Harbaugh deserve some blame? Yes, because he should have. He has the experience, right? So when you talk about just straight Super Bowl experience, Absolutely. Harbaugh won one, and 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 Beckham won one. So those sure. those are the two people on the team, sure. right? That really should have led in that championship game. Yep. Here's why I blame the offensive coordinator. Uh, I, and again, maybe I'll say seventy percent. Yeah. Uh, another twenty percent goes to uh, Mark Andrews. Right. <laughs> he came back and all of a sudden became the focal point of the offense. Why? Right, they're all of a sudden running two tight end sets when they didn't do that all year. Um, uh, when Mark Andrews was it's hurt, just you're bringing a guy who's his first game back in a high leverage situation. Exactly. Use to your me, other pieces. It was the opportunity to use him in the red zone, right? But again, Beckham has the experience. Where were the slants to Beckham, right? So in the beginning of the first half of the game, it was Mark Andrews and it was um, uh, 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 Aguilar. Sure. Right, that was getting the attempts. Like I, I didn't get that. All yeah. of a sudden, you start throwing the ball to Zay Flowers, and guess what you're doing? You're moving the ball downfield. You're scoring touchdowns. Yeah. Right. Again, all season long, they've been throwing the ball to the wide receivers, and they abandoned that during that game. So they abandoned throwing the ball to wide receivers in that game, and they abandoned the run game. Yeah. Overall, they had 16 rushing attempts. 100 to Kansas City's 32. Acceptable yep. for a Baltimore Ravens team, especially right? when they've been a run led attack all year. Now, <laughs> listen, again, I keep it fair, right? Lamar, he wasn't accurate in that game didn't right? have his best he game, also sure. held the ball too long in the uh in the pocket sure uh, now granted kansas city was spy rushing him two turnovers where too rushing, so that's gonna hurt but him. they're not rushing aggressively up the field yep. so it it, it, it was it all to push him, him further back it so he gave couldn't scramble in a direction time. Yep. exactly yep. right and as soon as he made a decision they went after him um i guess thirdly in that sequence um, I'm disappointed that the Ravens didn't have designed quarterback runs. I right? totally agree. So now I'm gonna bring yeah, up. Where's this play. the RPOs? That's what they that's what they ran. Not the not, options. Yeah, not even the RPOs. Half the time it was just run right? options. Just, and it could I, be I wanted to see a straight quarterback sweep, I'm straight with you. quarterback I'm power. With you. And here's what I'm, I'm saying. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about fourth down calls a little bit later on, sure. right? But I thought it was the wrong move, but it had a positive outcome. Sure. Ravens go for it, fourth and one on their own 34 yard line. Yeah. Chiefs are up 7 nothing first quarter, sure. right? They pack it in, um, three tight ends, uh, design run for Lamar. He busses it open for a 21-yard yard game. Yep, yep. The, the, I thought he was going to score. I actually thought he was going to score. Now, Looks like he was trying to juke out that to one that guy. To that point, the, 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 one of the deficiencies of the Kansas City Chiefs, because they were in six DBs, yep. they loaded up the line of scrimmage Right, because they had speed but not power. Sure, sure, right? sure. Right, so they wanted to get. But to if you the get a hat back, on a hat and that game, that you, gap opens, you, 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 you've got you one guy to one, beat. Yep. Exactly. You've got one guy there's, to beat. There's nobody yep. on the secondary sure. level that was going to make a tackle, right? Yep. And if you think about it, later on in the game, I think it was Gus Edwards' third carry. It was in the third quarter. He broke one open for a 10-11 yard gain, yep. right? And I thought he was going to go to the house. Why? Because there was I nobody did, in the secondary. I know what you're talking about, yep. Right? And so he got we didn't that get touched first the first five yards. Exactly. Yeah. And where was that? Like, I expected more rushing attempts. Where I give the Kansas City Chiefs a ton of credit, and based on their experience, Pacheco, 24, 24 attempts, yeah. right? Yep. He's been averaging about 15, 24 yeah. attempts, right? Mm -hmm. Only 2.8 per carry, too. So it's not like it was anything special, but it was about the grinding out exactly. drives. Yes. So now let's look at how the game started. Kansas City Chiefs get the ball. What do I do? And now listen, I got all the hate. Ricky's rant. Ba 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 ba. But Patrick Mahomes started the, the game. Hey, hey, my best player, my boy. 
I'm gonna throw you the ball right here, right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah, five Why? catches on that first drive? Like something ridiculous. Yeah. But he got the first uh catch. He got the touchdown on that drive. And it on Hamilton, we dude. talk about rhythm, right? So hey, listen, Fair. hey, touch the rock, right? Feel this energy. Bang, I'm in the, in the game all already. Yeah, and again, sure. no dig, but Josh Allen. Why don't you do that with Stephon Diggs? Yeah. Just let him touch the rock. Now, why is that important? Okay, let's fast forward. Third quarter, or I think it was actually the end of the uh, towards the end of the second quarter. Yep. Patrick Mahomes is in danger. Third and eight, right? A uh, uh, Baltimore Ravens are about to sack him. Uh, 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 Patrick Mahomes steps up and just literally flicks it to Travis Kelsey. And Travis Kelsey's like, yo, my boy, he's in danger. I got you. Why? Because I'm in rhythm, right? You need me to save you? Yeah. I got you, my boy. Mm. All of a sudden, ha, just flips out to the other side. A defender on his hip twirls his body in a way I don't even understand. Yep. Catches the ball and saves the day, right? So my point is... Is that right? Like, there's gonna be plays in now. People are just gonna remember that play. Like, oh my God, Travis Kelsey, best tight end yeah, in the, the game. The throw by but Mahomes was crazy too. He's warmed up, and here's the thing: Mahomes, he he, you know, contorted his body. He saw that he was gonna get sacked. He saw that he was gonna get hit. But they needed to move the sticks. And who's he looking at? I'm in danger, Travis Kelsey. My boy's in danger. Sure. Let me come back to him. I see that you're going to have to throw some sort of wild throw, right? I don't need it to be perfect because I'm in rhythm. I'm ready to go. I got your back. Boom. Snags it. Obviously, he had to look good for his girlfriend. Shout out Taylor Swift and all those Swifties, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. But boom. They were right? getting a little kissy-kissy kissy after the game, for <laughs> hey, sure. Hey, well, that was like the first kiss, right, we saw. Uh, that's the first like, one I've seen on camera. I was like, all right, oh, yeah. listen. It's getting look, serious. Things are getting say, serious. All I'm going to say, right, hey, Taylor Swift, she's being a good girlfriend. She shows up to the game. Supporting her man. Right? Hey, and then here's the other thing. Hey, my boo needs seven more catches to pass Jerry Rice. <laughs> right? Oh, I'm a beater you. in that game. Patrick you. Mahomes. Hey, my boy needs seven catches. Yeah. I got you. Four or five catches on the first drive. Yo, let's get this record. So, listen. Comes down to experience. And then uh, I I'll end with this. Right? Uh, at, at the end of the game, the Baltimore Ravens end up sacking um, Patrick Mahomes two times. Yep. Prior to that, Patrick Mahomes did not get sacked in the playoff games in his previous seven to yeah. eight playoff games. This was also the team right? that led the league in sacks. Uh, the uh, the Ravens, Ravens led the league in sacks, right? But let's think about the Chiefs, right? Uh, uh, Jawan Taylor, right tackle, right? Constantly getting penalties all year long. He was clean. Ain't no penalties. Yeah. MVS. Did they not have their first penalty in that game until the fourth quarter? Something like that. Yeah. MVS, cut him, right? Hey, end of the game, you wide open, I got you. What Bang. did Patrick catch Mahomes say, the game. right, when he dropped the uh, uh, the catch uh, versus the Eagles? Hey, guess what? I Maybe I just need to take something off of it. This time, my man's wide open. Should I gun it? Or let me float well, it a little bit. Let me drop it right so into he can just, just drop it in that bread basket. I got you, right? Yeah. And then lastly, Baltimore Ravens. You want to see the inexperience, right? Um, the penalties. The, the stupid penalties, penalties so, on third downs. So, uh, uh, third and longs, Cl too. Clowney is going to spear Patrick Mahomes in the face mask. I don't even know the defensive tackle's name is going to club Patrick Mahomes in the face, yeah. right? Um uh, Roquan Smith didn't take the bait. I Travis know. Kelsey was baiting him. Mm, Kyle and Van, Noy Van Noy head butts him right in front of the exactly. official. Get yeah. away from the play. Just, you have him in third okay. and long. Yo, and then what Kelsey's do? I got him. I got him. Throw the flag. It's Throw so the flag. frustrating. Now, right to one of the most egregious one, and I get it. He's a rookie. Zay Flowers, you make a big play. Three fouls, three personal fouls were committed, right? Yeah. So for all those people saying like, oh, why are you throwing the penalty? Let him taunt, let him flex, ba 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 ba. Every one of those was a legit penalty. So he pushed him down on the ground so he can get up. Physical first, contact, it's over. First personal foul. It's over. Second, you're gonna spin the ball in my face? Like, like in my face. Yeah. Right? While I'm still down. Okay. Then you wanna stand over me while the ball is spinning and flex? Right? That's what you want to allow? Let me tell you all those offensive players, right? As a defensive player, we're going to fight. We're going to fight. I can tell you right now, we're going to fight. I you want to flex like that? Oh. And you play offense. You're listen, a pretty boy. I'm going you ain't about to that life. Take your head off. I don't, you want to, I'm going to get this 15 yard penalty because when you come over this middle, you're about to lose your life. Right? 
So that's how yeah. a defensive player thinks. I can uh-huh. tell you right now. So if that flag isn't going to be thrown, yo, Zay Flowers, when you come over this middle, be prepared to lose your life. Yep. Right? Yeah. And so it, it was the right decision that the flag was thrown. Sure. And then guess what? It's bad karma. Yeah. Now you want to dive into the ed- end zone? Guess what Sneed is? He's motivated. Let me knock this sucker out and change the game. You yeah. thought you changed the game? You thought you And he flagged? got beat on the play too, but he stuck with it and bang, he makes exactly. a play that changes the That's game. That's football karma yeah. right there, 101. Sure. So at the end of the day, uh, like you said, the Ravens try to bully them. Like At the end of the day, they just needed to play football, right? We want to talk about penalties. They had an opportunity to kick a, a field goal in the third quarter. Um, Zay Flowers made another big play, but then offensive tackle took a, a, um, a holding penalty. Yep. Um, took him out of field goal range. Then big catch by um, uh, Mark Andrews, right? Now they're right around the 41-yard line, just on the edge of field goal sure. range. It's third and four. In, or sorry, third and seven. They could have run the ball, right? So I want to be aggressive in the first quarter on my own 35-yard line and go for it on fourth and one. But it is third and seven, yeah. right, on the Kansas City 41, and I don't run the ball sure. with the intent. If we don't get it, we're about to go for it on fourth down. Instead, I throw the ball, sack, Lamar gets sacked, and now you're knocked out of field goal range. Kansas City gets the ball back and kicks a field goal, goes up. Um, uh, seventeen seven in the game. Sure, that's the difference. Yep. Right, and so and it felt like it was it, that seventeen. The ten point lead felt like it could have been a three touchdown lead. Hundred percent. That's what it felt like. Hundred percent. And people are saying, and it is true that uh, the Ravens defense shut out Patrick Mahomes right in the second half. But this is how Patrick Mahomes was the elite uh, uh, game manager. Sure. He's like, listen, I ain't gonna let you. I ain't gonna throw a turnover right here. I ain't gonna give you multiple sacks. Right? Hey, you're giving me penalties in first down so I could bleed this clock. You mentioned this in our pre-production meeting. The Kansas City Chiefs had the ball for 15 minutes more than the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. You want to see it's the like difference your offense in the didn't game? play in a quarter. That's the difference of the in game. the game. But in that second half, those penalties extended those drives and sure. ate up the clock. Yeah. And that's the difference in the game. I hear you. And listen, I don't want to like sit here and pile on because I'm sure Lamar is probably feeling. Lamar did not have his greatest game, but I think his struggles were attributed to one. They tried to treat him like he was a drop back type quarterback. Um, That's not who Lamar is. Lamar is a combo. He throws off of the run based action, like running the ball and then mixing in your play action to where Lamar can scramble and either run himself or then go and get to a pass play. The inability to adjust. The Chiefs, I, I didn't look up the exact stats on this, but I would not be shocked if the Chiefs blitzed on over 80% of their downs. Where are the screens? Where are the checkdowns? You didn't get to any of those yep. flats or anything t- until the, the third In quarter. In our chat, I was talking You're about that. Where's the, the screen? Like, Where's the screen? you got to adapt at some point. So as much as you can put it on Lamar not playing, well, Baltimore, you have to adjust. And again, this just goes back to... You want to tug on Superman's cape? Don't test the heart of a champion, number one. And don't test whether you want to see if the Chiefs are about that smoke or not. They've been to six AFC championships like you just hinted at for a reason. They are about that smoke. They are a physical team. They know how to play ball. Absolutely. And they're going to play the most physical when the games are at the highest. Now, Step there's up. also one big reason why they're so good, right? Sure. Basically, Andy Reid, elite game planner, right? But 100%. second half adjustments, he's he's the best in the game, I agree. right? He's going to come out and do something different uh, and adjust to however you're playing them defensively. And that's what makes him so elite. But here's the other side of it, sure. right? Spagnola, Spags, right? He is that elite Hey, shout well. out Giants 07 and 11, D coordinator, baby. That boy knows how to call it. Yo, he, like, when it comes to championship games, like he legit might be the greatest Shows Andy Reid smart again to hiring a guy so, like that. And, and, and they coach back on the Eagles back in the day yep. when they were both position coaches. Yes. And, but here's what I'm saying. Spags is a head coach on the defensive side, and he makes the same type of defensive adjustment. Yes. Right to to to. Um, he's aggressive, just like he was in New York, man. He'll come 100%, after you. You know, but yep. he but they were smart enough to know, like, hey, this is how we're gonna rush Lamar. Nobody get past him. Yep. Just like force slowly. him back. Ex- force him back. Ex- exactly. Yep. And and they did that, and they were prepared. So like those adjustments were the difference in the game. And so yes, does Lamar uh, deserve blame? A hundred percent. He wasn't tremendously accurate. But where were the screens? Where were the slants? How come you didn't get Beckham involved? But where right? was your game plan? Where that was got your running? So- so good all year. Like they missed Greg Roman. Yeah. They they needed to run the ball. 
Like that's what they, that's what they needed to do. Sure. So we're you know hardball uh, to the problem when you look at the Ravens and how they break down. Sure. Right. Like you 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 have a great defensive coach. Sure. Harbaugh is a great overall coach, but how much influence does he have sure. on the offense? Yep. Right. And so Munkin, I think you saw his inexperience, and he didn't have the ability to just in game. Well, again, you've hit on a lot of these things, and I think what we'll do is we'll just roll the other game into the next segment because yeah, yeah, this absolutely. game has had so much. Um, you've hit on it all, though. This game just came down to experience, okay? You have KC. I mean, again, a, a lot of younger people don't realize Andy Reid went to four straight NFC championships back in the day with the Eagles, too, as well. So this is not anything familiar, but six straight AFC championships. You got to understand something when you're going to play the Kansas City Chiefs. They're not going to beat themselves. If you are going to beat them, you are going to beat them. It's just that simple with your execution. And for all the experience and poise that they showed, the Ravens did not show that. And it showed up across the board. Kyle Van Noy's penalty. Um, uh, Zay Flowers, obviously, the penalty yep. after having a huge game. <laughs> Zay Flowers not tucking the ball when he's about to go and score a touchdown. Too well. <laughs> Little things like that. The offensive coordinator's inability to go and adapt. Okay, <laughs> Lamar, for as much as we both love Lamar and think that he is Dude. criminally underrated, okay, Lamar showed a little bit of a lack of experience in being in a game like that, too, as well. And I think Lamar, too... Once they went down 10, I think Lamar even started pressing a bit because he's like, like, I'm against Patrick Mahomes. Like, they can go score really quickly. And you could see it just in the way he was throwing. He wasn't stepping into a lot of throws. He wasn't throwing with confidence. Now, hats off to the Kansas City defense at the same time. They had a lot to do with that. But even when he was clean, he just looked very, like, his feet were just all over the place. So he's he, looking right. He's looking so middle. The, he's looking left. He just wasn't really going. Everything felt so rushed before but he threw the, the ball. But here's the crazy thing, right? Like I said, I just mentioned experience. This is Lamar Jackson's first AFC Championship 100%. game. 100%. Right? It's as big. Much, it's different. As much, talent, as much credit as we give him for being an elite talent, he's about to win two Super Bowl MVPs. Sometimes you got to lose I, before you can win. I, if you, I said this earlier in our podcast. Football is the one sport that practice matters. Experience matters. The more you play, the better you are. Sure. So why are the Kansas City so uh, elite? They've been in the AFC Championship game six years in a row. Sure. Right? So that matters. Patrick Mahomes, that matters. Think about this. Patrick Mahomes lost to Brady. You don't think he brought that experience into that game? Right? He, he he lost to Joe Burrow. Sure. You don't think he remembers that? And they adjusted to it? 100%. And the mistakes he made? Sometimes Lamar you lose hasn't had you win. those experiences yep. to sure. be able to draw upon, sure. right? And so that's where you, Harbaugh had to be the guy to bring that experience. That's why I thought Beckham would have such a huge game, sure. right? And so those are the little things that happen within the game that uh, 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 set the Ravens back. And I'll also say this, right? The Ravens assume they were the man. Sure. Right? And in football, you got to have a crap ton of confidence. You do. Right? 100%. But you cannot be the man until you beat the man. Right? And instead of them humbling themselves and saying like, yo, we got to take them down. Sure. They're the man. They're, they have what we want. Yep. Now, let's go take it. Yep. Right? But we need to recognize we have to go take it. Right. And so where Harbaugh could have said, like, hey, I'm not going to put it all on Lamar and I'm not going to put it all on Lamar's arm. But they right? did. Thir and that was a problem. Yep. throwing attempts and only 16 rushing attempts. Again, no, none of the coaches recognize like, hey, we, we're not we don't have the ball. We, sure. we don't have time of possession. Let's start to, you know, uh, take that back over so we can make a huge difference in the game. Yeah. No, listen, I you you said it perfectly. Um I think a lot of people are going to probably try to kill Lamar. Listen, he was one of the final four. He was one of the final four quarterbacks that had a shot to go and play for a Super Bowl. So as much as you want to sit there and maybe dig at him or say he didn't have a good game, and I'm not saying you, I'm talking yeah, more, so pe more so people in general. I mean, again, you're in the final four. You're obviously one of the elite players, you know, to get to that times more times than not. Um, not to say that the Ravens don't have a fantastic team around Lamar too as well, because this is easily the best team I think Lamar's ever gone into the playoffs with 
all around him, especially defensively. But I mean, the weapons wise too. Um, this is a learning experience for them. The thing that's tough about it, and it's going to be tough for the Lions too, as well as you don't know if you're going to get back here. And when you're well, in such thing. a close opportunity, it's tough. So Yeah, well, we're going to talk about success and failures in the next episode. Not everybody thought in the beginning of the season the Ravens would be here. No, you're very right, right. But listen, that's all the time we have for segment number one. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We run it back on segment number two. What is up, everybody? I am your host, Shane Mallory, joined with my co-host, Mr. DaCosta. And this is segment two. This is going to be the final segment of this week, being that we have two weeks before the Super Bowl. All right, so a little bit of a shorter show this week. But we got so excited with that Ravens-Chiefs game that we forgot there was another game played this weekend, too, as well. That was more eventful. I mean, it was eventful, yes. Higher scoring, too, as well. But beautiful people. You know what I'm going to say. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We're looking for those five-star reviews on all our major platforms. Yo, we're those 49ers fans, right? Like, they yeah. haven't shown up yet. I know, you know I know. What I, mean? I guess maybe we got to talk a little bit of uh, ish, maybe, just to get them out of the woodworks or something. Oh, yeah, no. we'll see. Oh, I mean, no. Listen, they won the game, but, I mean, maybe we'll get them really going before with our Super Bowl picks next week. But they'll have to <laughs> wait. I'll see if I can drum up some controversy here. But... I looked at it like the 49ers did survive that game. They ended up winning by 10 Great points, but I it. mean, I wouldn't exactly say it was in uh, the ending score wasn't indicative of how close the game actually was. Uh, man, I got to tell you, when I watched that first drive, the Lions were just like crisp, like they were just on it. The motion, the different plays, the reverse that scored for the long touchdown. Yeah. I was just like, that's a beautiful first drive. Holy crap, are the 49ers in trouble? And it looked like they were, man, early on in that game. Uh, theme that you kept talking about in the last game came up to bite the Lions, too, as well. Experience. You know, like, experience does matter. Yeah. And I think that ultimately played to the 49ers' favor. Really um, listen, the first half, the Lions looked like the way better team. They were pushing the 49ers around up front. They were running the ball pretty much wherever they wanted to. Getting everything off of play action, too, as well. Big plays to a lot of different guys. I mean, Amon Ross St. Brown was cooking. Laporta was cooking. Gibbs and Montgomery were getting whatever they Jameson wanted on Williams. the ground. Jamison Williams, the big play, deep threat. He also had the reverse for the run on the touchdown, too, yep. as well. I mean, the Lions just looked like they could get whatever they wanted. You fast forward to the second half, okay? And here's my thing. Love me some Dan the Man Campbell. I really do. You are talk a, about it. Just you talk are, about it. You are in a position. It. Yeah, you are in a position, okay, where, again, the Lions are young. I do assume that they'll be back. And I think they were even a year ahead of what most people thought this year, making it to the NFC Championship. But make that when you're – exactly. When you're there, you got to go and win the game. Dan, you're up 14 points. Kick the field goal and make it a three-possession game. The 49ers would have been desperate. And they're not built to score quickly either. You go up 17 points – I find it highly unlikely the 49ers come back and find a way to win that game. But he got so here's the, the whole no risk it, no biscuit thing, and it cost him. But here's it really the thing, did. right? So uh, Kyle Shanahan talked about a half. Hey, guys, we're only down 17 points, Yeah. right? He said this at half, right, you know, 30 minutes left in the game. Sure. Dan Campbell had a chance to kick that field goal. There was five minutes left in the third, yep. right? So that would have left 20 minutes in the game, up three scores. At that point, the 49ers had to press. Sure. Now, yes, you brought they up They would experience. have had to throw the ball, yep. Um, this is how Kyle is experienced. Remember, he was on the wrong side Good point. of that 28-3 comeback yeah. uh, Atlanta Falcons sure. versus the uh, um, Tom Brady and the Patriots, yep. right? So there was the experience that showed up. What did Shanahan That's a good point you brought up, too. To that matters. In yeah. that game was run the ball. Sure. So what did he realize that he had to stay consistent? Hey, I need to run the Still ball. Run I the need ball. to move the chains. There's not a need to hurry up and rush yet because if we score and my defense makes a play, yep. we're back in it. And that's exactly what happened. Yes. Now, Dan Campbell, here's the inexperience. Here's why analytics drives me nuts, mm. drives me absolutely Especially nuts. Especially in higher magnitude games. Right? So, uh, one, if he uh, if he goes for it, right, and makes it, he has like a 91% chance of winning the game, sure. going up three scores, right? Sure. Well, guess what? They were talking about it. If he kicked the field goal and made the field goal, there was an 89% chance they win the game. So analytics 2%. was only better by 2%. Yeah. And here are the factors that analytics don't take into account. Analytics doesn't take account if you're on the road. 
right? It doesn't take into account momentum, yeah, right? I, it doesn't take into account great experience, point. Great point. right? So all of a sudden, when you're facing an onslaught, you're on the road, the team is coming back. Sure. You just need to quiet. Think about basketball. You just need to make a bucket. You just need to quiet the crowd. Yes. If they kick the field goal, hey, guys, you're up. We're, or, or you're trying to come back. We're still up 17. Mm-hmm. Slow down, youngster. We're winning this game. And then the pressure was put back on them. Now, that was what they failed to do, right? And I get it, right? So they're saying, Dan Campbell, well, that's how he is. That's how they got there. Well, it doesn't mean that's how you're going to win the game to go Great to point. the Super Bowl. The whole Bowl, point is adaptability. Right? So, yes, Dan Adapt Campbell. Adapt to the moment. You have your pride. Yeah. You stuck to your guns. But guess what, right? It let's go. This is not the first time, right? So if this was the first time with Dan Campbell, I may have given him a pass. That Dallas game at the end that of the Dallas year. Dallas yeah, game. Sure. Three times he went for a two-point conversion and failed and lost a game where he could have just kicked the extra point, forced it to overtime, and give your team a chance. And here's how Dan Campbell couldn't read the room. Right, we want to talk about experience. Nobody on that team was experienced. Maybe CJ Gardner. I think he was on that Eagles team. Yes, yes. Right, um, but nobody else was experienced. And Jared Goff has been right? new Super and, and Bowl. Jared Goff, sure. he was experienced. Yeah. Right. Most and of the team so is young, though. Most of the team is young. Everyone else is yeah. not experienced. And Dan Campbell didn't realize, like, hey, listen, my team is young. My team is nervous right now. Right. You know what? I need to set them up for success. Sure. Right. Um, let me give my give defense them some breathing a break, room. Yeah. Right? Uh, so now here's the thing: that defense outperformed. Everyone thought the 49ers were going to light uh, them up. Well, man, uh, light up that secondary. Yep. Right. But guess what? You know, he was just like, "Oh, I wanted to." You know, uh, did a really good job against the run in the first half. Yeah. They did. Okay. But then let's move forward, right? So then you have another chance, right? Um, to to kick the field goal. Sure. You don't do it there, right? Turnover. Now they're right back in the game. You lose the game by three, six points, right? Now everyone is saying, "Well, there's no guarantee they would have made the field goal." Well, there's no guarantee you make the fourth and whatever. Yeah. Right. And then, like, listen, and he's had a great season, so I don't want to throw shade at him. I'm with you. But you you didn't throw the ball to Laporta. You didn't throw the ball to St. Brown. You didn't throw the ball to Gibbs. Right. In order of your best players. And Jamison Williams was killing it that game. Right, there were literally four to five other players you yeah, could have gotten he, the ball he's back a big to. Time, Montgomery, big play threat. Gibbs, St. Brown, Laporta. Yeah. Hell, where's your um uh, offensive tackle throwback? Hmm. Right, he released like, on one of those plays too. He was open. Yeah, where's the throwback? <laughs> so you know now, yes, was he open? Sure. He was, but guess what? Um, Jared Goff didn't have a great throw. Right on that first uh, yeah. fourth down. And then the uh, uh, second fourth down, he didn't have time because he got blitzed, right? And the 49ers fooled him. They showed man. They followed man. And what I mean by follow is that normally in man coverage, if a running back or a tight end uh, um, uh, flexes out to the wide side of the field, that defensive player, that linebacker, goes with that assignment sure. because everyone gets marked up, right? Yep. The cornerback has the first guy. The safety has the second guy. The linebacker has the third sure. third man in coverage, right? So now if that third man fle- uh, flexes out to be the first guy, uh, you follow him. So that happened. The guy was flexed. He came back in. The linebacker followed him. So that's an indication to man. the offense. Yep. That's man defense. Ball gets snapped. They played zone. Confused him. Also blitzed him. Right? Didn't know what to do. Now, yes, throughout the game, they were on the money. They were able to figure out the 49ers whether they're in man and zone. Yep. And that's why they were able to have so much success. <clears throat> guess what? Right? They caught on to you. They, they realized that you um, knew what uh, a zone or man they were playing. So they started to make sure they disguised it. That was their second half adjustment on defense. Yes. Right? And they made the crucial stop. They did. So that's why, that to me, uh, like 100% of the blame is on Dan Campbell. Like 100. Don't blame Gibbs. Don't blame that rookie. Sure. Because he had that was a ton a, of That great was a plays. weird handoff, too. The yes, I'm not was sure strange. if 
Jared Goff called the wrong play. I'm not sure if Jared Goff went the wrong way. I'm not sure if Gibbs went the wrong way. I'm not yeah. sure if Gibbs heard the wrong play. Either way, there was some confusion there. And when you're facing an onslaught on the road, all that crowd noise, it's easy to have confusion and a mistake. Dan Campbell, the leader, should have recognized and read the room and kicked the field goal. Right? I, I agree. Period. I agree. Like, yeah. he's 100%. And yes, you got your pride. You stuck to your guns. You Go for it on fourth down. God bless you. You lost your team the game because you failed to adjust. Just because you go for it on fourth down, and yes, he made it 80% of the time, right, doesn't mean you you, you don't kick the field goal to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. No, I hear it. Listen, uh, the other thing about him is, and I get it, he really likes to go for fourth down. He's a big brisket guy. But, and this is no disrespect to Jared Goff, who I think is another quarterback. He's underrated, and I think he's more than proven that this year. But when you go for fourth downs, you got Mahomes, you got Lamar, you got Josh Allen, heck, you got Jalen Hurts. I get it because there's so many different threats that you would have to account for in a fourth down situation. Are they going to run? Are they going to throw? Is it going to be something to the running back? There's a lot of – when the Lions call a fourth down play – it's somewhat predictable with a person like Jared Goff. And if the play breaks down or those first routes are covered, or it's a surprise, like you just alluded to, the 49ers kind of catch him napping, they show him man, but then they drop in his own. Jared Goff is not really the improvisational, improv, improvisational, man, I can't Improv say the word. Improvisational. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I can't tough, say it right, right when now, you're right? trying to say it in the, the moment. The guy that improvises a he's lot. Not a, yeah, he's not an improvising type player. Yeah. You got to know your personnel in that type of a situation, Campbell. Like, you are playing a defense, too, that's had his number in the years past. Put him in a situation for success or just, I keep going back to the same thing, kick the field so goal. So here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. I, I actually one fourth down is one I thing. I actually but... disagree with you a little bit, right? Like, I think Jared Goff did enough that he needed to win. I think that the, what Dan Campbell needs to do is to put that defense in a position of success, sure. right? Like, a kicking field goals sometimes is an extension of the defense, right? Because, like, if you have a turnover and then you go for it on fourth down and you miss it, sure. right? Like, the defense did their job. They got you the extra possession. You need to put points yes. on the board. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like he failed and let down defense. So the defense outperformed. Right. The de think about it. Um, th they're up 14. They were up 17. Uh, the defense stopped the 49ers and held them to a field goal. You're still up for they didn't give up the touchdown. No, yeah, You're sure. up 14. Sure. So this big momentum yep. and 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 the 49ers are coming for you. You kick a field goal and you go up 17. You you you. You put that to bed right yeah. away. But wasn't it? I think it was like a fourth and three, too. That was the only point I was trying to say is this isn't like a fourth and one. This was like a fourth and three. So I can see if you have like an athletic or a quarterback that presents a dual threat. With someone like Goff, again, it's just you're kind of limited the in what you're going to do. The ball was on the 25-yard line. It was a 42-yard field goal. I'm it, with it, you, man. You'll get no argument from me. You got to kick You know, there. so like, again, yes, you got your pride. But guess what? Like, listen. Heavy is the is the man that wears the crown. Yeah, and by by no means am heavy I throwing... lies the head that wears the crown. I believe is the phrase. I got you. I got you. I got you. Right, I got you. Right, I got you. We're trying right. to get something the dude right here. That wears we couldn't the say improvisation. Right? <laughs> the dude that wears the crown has all the pressure and stress, and sure. making those high pressure decisions right is never easy. Yes, but at the end of the day, when when you're when you're the man. Uh, at the top, right, you have to realize you have everyone's livelihood in your response in yes. your responsibility. In and your there's hands. no guarantee you'll everyone's be back. family in your hands. He had the city of Detroit in his hands. Sure. They've never been to a Super Bowl. So I understand it. No risk it, no biscuit. I understand it. We're going for fourth down. We're up. There's five minutes left in the third quarter. You're up 14. I'm gonna kick this field goal. Ride and play the long game. If they right again, we talk, I've talked about this all season long. More games are lost than won. Sure, the 49ers did not win the game. Dan Campbell lost the game for the city of Detroit. Yeah, listen, and I hear you, man. Uh, and, and I hope it's something that Dan Campbell can learn from because this is a young team. They should be able to still be contending for at least the next two to three years, I would say, with this roster put together. Uh, they don't have any major extensions or contract coming up. All their talent is reasonably young. But it is something he has to learn to. On the flip side, when he makes that decision, okay, all the momentum, okay, flips back to a team 
with the experience. You talked about this with Shanahan before, too. Shanahan has gone through the trials and tribulations of some bad decision-making in the past in some of these big games. Well, you gave him the opportunity, and you put life back into an experienced team who had been in this game before, and they went and they capitalized. And I wasn't sure until Ayuk made that catch. Once Ayuk made that crazy catch, I'm like, ah, oh, this is this is not turning well for the Lions right now. But so they get to within a touchdown after that drive. Do you realize and the then, defender dropped the interception? Can, yes. can we just say that? Sure. Like, so sure. as much as we want to give Brock credit for that, yes. that throw and momentum, if the D-back just catches the ball that hit him in the hands. Yes. Right? Sure. Like, we're 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 Credit to Ayuk, though, for this. keeping his concentration and making a hell of a catch. Yeah. I, I thought it bounced off the ground. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm like, did he, did he catch that? Like, yeah. it was freaking epic. Yeah. Right? But then they score. Bang. You turn around to the next drive. They fumble. And now all the momentum that you had is right back to the 49ers. And they go and they tie the game. But here, but here's the thing, right? Okay, now, uh, what's it called? Um, the... Uh, um, the 49ers go up, yes. up three. You have the opportunity sure. to kick the field goal to tie the game. You don't do that. Now they go up 10. Now very last play, right? Um, you, you're you're at the goal line. You have an opportunity to score the touchdown. You have three. You have, you have your all three of your timeouts left, and you decide to run the ball and call the timeout. You've yes. effectively lost the game. Yeah, the running, right? the, the running so play, really. Yes. So it's not. So again, why do I blame Dan Campbell? Right, the fourth downs, that running play, like. Ended it. At that point, you're almost better off just going and kicking the field goal and then coming right? back. And mind using you, that your was three. third yeah. down. And what did yes. you do? You ended up throwing it on and on, on first down yeah. and, 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 and scoring the totally touchdown. Totally agree. Right? Totally agree. If that was if that's what you wanted to do, you should have kicked the field goal on you know first down, yes. save the time with your three timeouts, and get the ball back to push for a score. Like yeah. again, like that decision making was crazy. Uh, and I listen. I would have loved to to have seen. A Kansas City Chiefs and Detroit Lions Super Bowl oh, would have been exciting. Yeah, you, first of all, you were talking about Taylor Swift and music. <laughs> D, Motown coming, Motown coming to Taylor Vegas. Swift. Sure, bro, baby. Yeah. But listen, seriously, uh, like, uh, had to, and I got to give a little credit. I know we got to move on. Sure, shout out, right to the 49ers, Brock Purdy. And all this type of stuff. He didn't play great, but he um, made the plays when he needed you know, to. Shout out to Debo for showing up big in that game, <clears throat> right? CMC, yo, McCaffrey's listen, that dude. <clears throat> I, listen, I, most I versatile running back I got, I've seen. I don't since know if Danny I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this, but that might be the baddest white boy ever at running back. <laughs> yeah, you got no problem with that. Just, I, I, you got I, no problem with that, yo. Yo, that boy got game. Yeah, dude. Like, man, he's, he's good he's at nasty. that RB he's position, man. He's tough. He got heart. Yeah. He got a ton of heart. So he much, does. much respect. And uh, shout out to the 49ers and San Fran. So experience, they, they did hey, thing. experience matters, right? Yeah. So, again, um, I'll just say for the Lions and the Ravens, the biggest thing for them is learn from those experiences. And hopefully if you get back again one day, mm -hmm. you prove that you've learned those experiences. Yeah, but here's the All thing, right? right? The, um, you know, uh, you talk about getting back, right? You know, the Green Bay looked good. They're going to face a lot more competition. Sure. Right, later the on. The Rams will be a team that's right? going to be on the rise, the too, as well. The Rams going to be on a team on the rise. Right. The Eagles. There's no guarantee you get back. There's just right. none. You and know, for the Ravens, the AFC is the tougher conference by far. So. Yeah, but, so let's talk about this, right? Let's talk about coaching for a second, right? Because, sure. you know, when you think about it, right, um, y you uh, look at the Eagles, right? The Eagles just brought on Kellen Moore at offensive coordinator. Vic Fangio, Vic D Fangio. coordinator. Yep. Like, you want to talk about an upgrade? Sure. Right? Like, the the Eagles are going to get better. Let's see sure. what happens with AJ Brown. But like, like immediately they've gotten better on uh, uh, from a coaching standpoint, right? Well, so, so coaching highlights in general, right? Before we go into some of those other teams, um, again, the final message to both of those teams: Ravens, Lions, try to learn from this. But again, there's no guarantee you ever get back. So I mean, it's tough. But the coaching highlights and just showing you how the league is going to get tougher. Harbaugh. Going to the Chargers, okay? That's huge. The AFC West now is going to become much more competitive. Especially they will make the playoffs like next season. I'm with you. Hey, I'm with you 100%. Fans, it's official now. Yeah, Josh Allen, step up. There's Raheem, one less playoff spot. Raheem Morris coming from the Rams now, who just had a heck of a rebound year this year, goes to the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not saying the Falcons are going to be lighting the world on fire, but that's another route. But what that highlights is... Bill Belichick and Mike Vrabel, two unsigned coaches right now. Not sure. Vrabel might end up in Washington. It seems like Bill is not interested in that but, right now. But let, so. listen, let me say this, right? So 
like I'm very, very excited for Raheem Morris, right? Uh, Me too. I think he deserves a second chance. Jersey boy. Right. right? You know, like I think uh, he's from he went Irvington. to Hofstra. Yeah. He went to, played at Hofstra, coached at Hofstra. Yeah. Like, so super excited for him. And again, that um, Sean McVay tree is expanding even more. Sure. And with those offensive weapons, I think they're going to sure. be very, very good. However, I have to say this. The fact that you turned down Bill Belichick and you would have automatically been in the playoffs with I don't even you don't I don't even have to know who your quarterback out of that is. division. But if Bill sure. Belichick was your head coach. You're you immediately are going to make. The I think it's probably going right? to be a mistake. I, I so think it's going to end up so being that's a mistake my only, for them. Yep. That, that's my issue with the Falcons. Yes. you had the opportunity to get the greatest coach ever uh, to to be coaching your team and to set you up for success. Uh, you know, so I, I again I really really hope Raheem Morris does well. And, and I'm rooting for him. But overall, I think it was a mistake to not hire Bill Belichick. And if there was a power struggle that he was going to bring on Matt Patricia or Joe Judge, I would have hoped uh, Bill would have been Josh able McDaniel. to Josh McDaniels. Even though as an offensive player, I think player, as an OC, he terrible. would have been great for there. Yeah, I don't think he would have been terrible. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but ultimately, I, I would He's a good OC. He's a bad head coach. coach. Yeah, you know, uh, so, you know, so. But, uh, yeah. And Ben Johnson stays in Detroit, too. So, I mean, that's good news for Detroit because a big part of why they were so successful is their offense was so very listen, well I th- called. I, listen, I think, um, you know, he, he took a playbook out of uh, the Michigan Wolverines. They're all trying to run it back, man. And, hey, and, and listen, no pun intended, but literally they're like, yo, listen, you know, we don't like how things ended. There's a lot of unfinished business. And at the end of the day, Ben Johnson could have said, like, I could go to Washington. And I don't have a QB. Yes, I yeah. have the second overall. Don't make pick. your first job your last but job. What if all of a sudden the Dallas Cowboys come available next season? Right. I mean, I think that'd be a better job. Sure. Right? And there's going to be a lot of other openings, right? And there's Especially nothing wrong with being a New coordinator, Orleans, too. There's right? nothing wrong with being a coordinator. Especially Look at Spags. with those weapons. Yes. Especially with those yeah. weapons. He's only 37 years old. So I am excited for the um, uh, uh, Lions running it back. Yeah. And listen, I'm just interested to see, like, what happens with... I think Vrabel is going to end up getting one of these vacancies at some point. Maybe he ends up in Washington. But I'm very curious to see what happens with Belichick. It's just shocking that the greatest head coach of our lifetime, and possibly ever doesn't have a job right so now. So this is the difference between Bill Belichick and Nick Saban. Nick Saban stayed young, and Bill Belichick was, like, rich and smug. Yeah, he got caught up in his ways, the, the yeah. Patriot way, the Bill Belichick way, and it's the league has changed. Exactly. So, you you know, you're going to have to have some adaptability. Uh, before we go into a little bit of the success, failures, disappointments, and surprises, playoff performer from the championship games. You want me to go first? I can go first. No surprise here. I got one, Travis Swift, (laughs) Kelsey, 11 receptions, 116 yards, TD, showing he's still that guy. And uh, I'm just going to say it, goat tight end. Okay. I mean, listen. Performs the biggest when the lights are brightest. That's that's what I want. I, I got I got nothing to say say against that. You know, uh, Kelsey's the man. You know, and listen, like I said, he got Kelsey. He got uh, Swifty on his arm now. Ooh, yeah. you know, he's he got a cute girl. Things. Absolutely, you know, got yeah. doing doing some big things. Absolutely. Um, my playoff performer, one Brock Purdy. Whoa! Brock Whoa! Purdy. That means a uh, Brock Purdy. Right? <laughs> we got Shawnee laughing in the background with my so listen, here's the my thing, hot right? take noise. Listen, I get it. He was the last pick in the draft. Um, and people were questioning whether he's an MVP, elite, all this stuff. Let me just point one thing out. He just wants to stir up the comments, right? man. I'm it's not even you, comments. I'm just again, I'm just speaking facts. Just speaking facts. Brock Purdy is only a sophomore. Sure, sure. Sophomore. Do you realize that? It's basically, he, just completed his first full season. Do you too. realize he has more playoff wins than Dak Prescott and Lamar Jackson combined? <laughs> Do you realize that yeah. in his second I hear in the season, Lamar one, who's that other right? guy? Is that somebody? <laughs> so, but no, listen, oh, brother, and, this guy stinks. Right? <laughs> we want to talk about adjustments, right? Brock Purdy. I don't think I've ever seen him use his legs <clears throat> right? in that game against. The I Lions. will give you that. It did Yo, show you a, an underrated for element. Forty-eight yards. Yeah. What the WTF? Right? I mean, boy. Right? <laughs> Try my best not to what curse the here, you know? But um no, but listen, Brock Purdy, playoff performer. And here's the thing everybody give CMC the credit, everybody give Debo the credit, Kittle the credit, Ayuk the credit, give Brock Purdy his due. They're in the championship, and uh everyone um loves Kyle Shanahan. 
0-30 until Brock Purdy showed up in comeback games. Oh, 0-30 until Purdy. I like that. 0-30 until Purdy. A little rhyme right there. <laughs> all right, so listen, we're going to have a little fun to uh, end this week, all right? I'm going to go through a few different teams, uh, kind of start at the top and then work our way back in terms of success or failure. So when I say the Baltimore Ravens to you, was their season a success or failure? So everyone is going to say their their season is a failure, right? Okay. Because they didn't make the Super Bowl and, and they didn't, and they and they didn't the win seat. it all. But listen, I like to remember, I, I, first of all, I never forget where I came from, right? Okay. And I don't ever like to forget how I started. Sure. And at the beginning of the season, a very, very few people um, uh, were picking the Ravens to win the Super Bowl. Fair. Right? First Let alone all, winning that division. 31 teams had an opportunity to get Lamar Jackson and nobody wanted him. Yeah. But the second time... Right, 31 teams had an opportunity to draft him. 31 teams had an opportunity to sign him as a free agent, and they didn't want him. He returns to Baltimore, right, gets Zay Flowers, pick up Beckham, and they're like, oh, Beckham's old. All right, this is Zay Flowers. He's He's got a little speed to him, some uh, shiftiness, but, like, they're still the Ravens. Todd Munkin, can he change this team, right? So, to me... Overall, from beginning to end, their season was a success. And I think this was the setup to run it back. Okay. Right? Because uh, that offensive coordinator is going to be better. He's going to learn from this moment. I love their yep. defensive coordinator. And so I think they're going to be in position to really make a lot of noise. I think they're one uh, additional weapon away. So... As much as I like everything you said, I have to ultimately go with the failure side of it just because uh, number one seed, this was like one of your best shots, go and get it done. You had to find a way to go and get that game, especially being that they only lost by seven points. And I'm going to be fair, just like I look at their season, ultimately is more failure success. Same with the Bills. You're at like a you're at like a crossroads right now. The Bills. You went to an AFC Championship three years ago, and then you haven't you haven't been able to get back since. So while maybe I'd give a little bit more leniency to the Ravens because ultimately they had a level some new pieces. Okay, both teams are still waiting to get over that hump. All right. So you brought up the Bills. I think the Bills season was a failure because they're gonna have. They're old. They're going to have salary cap yeah. issues. They're going to start paying uh, uh, Josh Allen $50 million a sure. year, right? And and they haven't adjusted enough yeah. to show – like, they haven't showed me anything of why they're going to be able to run it back, period. Sure. To me, they, they've lost more than they've developed. Okay. Um, Lions, success or failure? Uh, to me, I got to tell you right now, 100% of success. I did not expect them to be in the conference championship game this year. Oh, my God. I have to say it was a failure. Whoa. Right? Okay. Because I expected them to be good. I didn't expect them to be this good, but I didn't expect them to. I didn't expect Dan Campbell to make these dumb decisions and stand on those dumb decisions. And my fear and why it's a failure, I don't know if he's the type of man that could adjust. I guess only time will tell. How about last one for the Dolphins? To me, Dolphins. failure 100% because they had Tua. They were healthy this year. Okay, They were like one of the best offenses in the league, and they lost to the same round last year with a backup quarterback. I, and they got I, beat I up. disagree. Their season was a success. No one thought Tua was going to make it through the season. <laughs> they didn't give him that fifth-year extension. Um, you know, Ty who thought Tyreek Hill was going to put up 2,000 yards or even get realistically close to it? Right? <laughs> and so... Uh, to approve that he could stay healthy, uh, uh, elite offensive weapons, um, you know, uh, they got hurt, right? And so they're due for a season where they're healthy yep. and they're going to make some noise. And trust me, as the as the bills are regressing, yep. the, the Dolphins are looking younger, better, faster, and more dangerous. And injury problem. Biggest disappointment, rapid fire right here. Biggest disappointment between these three teams, Cowboys, Eagles, or Jaguars? Jaguars is the biggest disappointment. Winning that division, um, tremendous, tremendous disappointment. Then I rank the Eagles and then the Cowboys. All right. Uh, to me, it's Cowboys because they were the second overall seed, and we get this every single year. They're supposed to be the Super Bowl team until they don't even make it to the divisional round this year. Eagles were the Super Bowl champ. Uh, not Super Bowl, but they were in the Super Bowl last year, so they're number two for me. Jags, I'll go three because while the Jags, biggest drop-off because they didn't even make it back to the playoffs after being a division winner, 
the expectation for me, they're still a young team. I didn't have the expectation for them to necessarily come and be a dominant team. But I thought they were going to take that next step, right? But Sure. And last one. Biggest surprise team out of all these. Bucks, Texans, Rams, Packers, or Colts? Ooh, I got to go with the Rams, right? Yeah. Like I thought they were still rebuilding. Um, who in the world knew who Puka Nakua was, right? So On the dynasty and, team, and baby. If, if, uh, they look this good now. Um, Watch and, out for the Rams next year. Uh, they got draft picks and they got money. Watch out for the They're Rams. They're going to get younger, year. better, more dangerous with Kyron Williams sure. in the backfield. Yep. Rams all the way. Biggest surprise. Honorable mention is the Texans for me, but I'm with you. The Rams, I think that that is a team to watch in the NFC. I wouldn't be surprised to see them competing C. for an NFC Stroud. championship or not a Super Bowl in the next coming years. But listen, folks, that is all the time we have for this week. Please don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe on all our major platforms. I am Shane Maller with my co-host. Ricky DeCosta. And we week. will see you next week when... When we run it back. Run 49ers, it back. We're looking for you. <laughs>